Hello again. <laughs> Welcome to our panel, uh, Drupal Community Events, Organize Locally, Contribute Globally. Uh, so I'm going to take you through and introduce us, and then each of us is going to talk a little bit about one of the initiatives uh, that we're working on. I'm Avi Schwab. Uh, I'm ProBoy on Drupal.org. Uh, I am a technical product consultant at ImageX, ImageX Media, uh, where I work on sites for YMCA's. We've got Leslie Glynn, uh, Leslie G on Drupal.org. She's a client success manager at Redfin Solutions. Kristen Pohl, uh, she is Kristen Dash Pohl. Senior Technical Consultant at Salsa Digital. And we have Sean T. Walsh, Sean T. Walsh on Drupal.org, co-founder of CrowdCG. Oh, hey, look, it's us again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we do a lot of things, and those are the jobs that we get paid for, but we also wear many different hats in our event organizing uh, community spaces. So. I am the lead organizer of MidCamp, that's the Chicago area Drupal camp. I'm also the secretary of MOSA, which is the Midwest Open Source Alliance. That's an organization that we made to help organize MidCamp. Uh, I'm also the president of the EOWG right now. There's Leslie again. <laughs> she uh, is the design for Drupal Boston uh, and NEDCamp organizer uh, and lead of one of those, oh. one or more of, of those camps. Uh, she's also the vice president of the EO, the, the event organizer working group, and she is the co-lead of the Project Browser Initiative. There's Kristen again. She is the Contribution Events Initiative lead, and she's an advisor to the event organizer working group. And we've got Sean. Uh, he is at Drupal Camp New Jersey, and he's also the secretary of the e event organizer working group. So we all have a lot of things that we do, uh, and hopefully we're going to tell you why and how you can get involved. So again, we're going to talk about the, I'm going to talk about the event organizer working group. Uh, Leslie's going to talk about community events on Drupal.org. Uh, then we're going to have some information from Kristen about contribution events initiative. And finally, Sean's going to talk about uh, outreach and how you can get more involved. So uh, the event organizer working group, uh, you can find more information on Drupal.org slash EOWG. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about us now. So we're a group of event organizers from around the world who are concerned with supporting community-led events within the Drupal community. These include camps, summits, training days, contribution days, and meetups. So we're really trying to help organizers organize everything that is not DrupalCons. Um, all of those other events are volunteer-driven uh, and community-led, and so we're helping to, to kind of raise the bar and, uh, and help everybody do that work. Like I said, our mission is to commu com our mission is to support community-led teams to grow Drupal through local events. And the vision is to establish a worldwide network of Drupal experts who organize events and aid one another to do the same. Uh, how we came to be, uh, we've, we've been, we've all been to many, many, many sessions like this. Uh, we were sitting in rooms all together, having kind of meetings every year at DrupalCon, at our events, talking about how it's so much work and such a pain to do the things that we do, even though we love it a lot. Uh, there was a call in November of 2018 uh, where we got folks together to start a more formal conversation about a, a group to organize events. Uh, in Seattle, uh, DrupalCon, Rachel Lawson, who was the community liaison at the Drupal Association then, was a huge uh, support in getting folks together in a, in a more formal environment, trying to come up with some concrete deliverables that we could you know, go from just having conversations every year to, to becoming something more formal. Uh, in 2019, uh, September, we uh, submitted our charter to Dries and the Drupal Association. Uh, we announced uh, in October of that year and then we established our board of directors in 2020. So we're a relatively new group uh, and also kind of officially formed right uh, before the pandemic started. Uh, so we've been kind of navigating that space and, and helping folks through all of their events since then. Here is who is currently on the board. Uh, so me, Leslie, Sean, who are up here. Uh, Matthew Saunders in uh, Colorado. John Picozzi, who's around uh, and is from Rhode Island. 
uh, Bert Borland in the Netherlands and Suchi Garg in Australia uh, are all the current board. Uh, the advisory board, um, they're uh, selected to assist and advise on the board, uh, and they help us with current initiatives, and we also will bring in folks with subject area knowledge if we are trying to kind of push forward a particular initiative. So we have Nico, um, who's in Vienna, we've got Kristen, uh, and then Salim, uh, who's also from Colorado. Uh, we are also just found out at DrupalCon <laughs> this week that there is a new network of European Drupal associations. Uh, that is a bunch of leaders in the, the European Drupal community who have had very similar conversations. So we're starting to um, talk with them and get involved and see how we can all help each other. Uh, the advisory board and the, um, the, the board board, uh, we have elections and nominations every year and we're always looking for more folks to get involved um, and, um, and more people to kind of help bring new ideas into the team. We're open to uh, existing event organizers and, and really our target for the board is folks who have been doing event organizing for a little while. Um, but we'd also love to have people join the team uh, that don't have as much experience who can help us figure out um, how to grow and how to help better support newer events. So our current initiatives, uh, one is the Drupal Events Platform. Uh, that's a website starter kit there are lots of words. <laughs> it's some code that helps people uh, build a new or add on to an existing events website because uh, as many of us who've been doing this for a while know, making our website for our event is one of the hardest parts of running a Drupal event, ironically. Uh, we have the event, or, uh, event information initiative, which is um, what, we've been, um, what we've been using to help guide the um, creation of the events page on drupal.org to help folks outside of people in this building find out what's going on in the Drupal space. Uh, the contribution events initiative um, Kristen is, is leading and that's promoting the organization and participation um, in contribution event, events worldwide. So making sure that contribution is a part of all of the events that we do and, and more. Uh, and then outreach, which is marketing the group itself. So trying to bring people in and trying to share the information that we've been creating to folks who might not be connected otherwise. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of the uh, initiatives that we worked on previously uh, and some of the work that's um, not represented by folks up here. One is documentation. So we have, um, uh, a number of years ago, a bunch of organizers got together and we had monthly meetings where we talked about our strategies for dealing with different pieces of organizing events with the goal of building a playbook that we could use to, to share the knowledge that we had. Uh, we, we, we talked for hours and hours and we had a like 30 page Google Doc of just notes from all of those conversations. Uh, the folks on the Drupal.org documentation team, uh, Jen Hodgden and a number of other folks, helped um, distill our, our copious notes into some organized uh, and structured content and information. So uh, part of the goal of that was to understand that every camp is different and everybody has unique needs and situations. Some events have to pay for their venues, some get it for free, some are 50 people, some are 500 people. Uh, and so what we really tried to do is create some, some playbooks and some templates and some structures to help folks figure out where they best fit and what, what they can do f to make their specific event successful. There's a ton of information there. Uh, it's in a wiki. We're always open to feedback. Uh, and you can check that out at bit.ly slash drupal dash events dash guide. Uh, on the screen here is just a screenshot of some of the some of the many documentation pages that are there. Uh, there's also information about organizing meetups uh, and other types of events. Uh, another kind of small initiative that we had been working on in the last year is camp debriefs. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to try to write a little bit more about events and, and create a, a, a written and, and kind of verbal history of of events that are going on. Um, 
personally, we do a retro for Minicamp every year. We have a ton of really interesting stuff that comes out of it, and I uh, very often fail to write a blog post or, or consolidate that into information that we can share publicly and, and is, is well-structured. Um, so we, uh, we started this project uh, after DrupalCon last year. Um, Faye Lauren uh, and I worked to interview a couple organizers, uh, write these little interviews, and, and post them on the website. So if you're interested in, um, in that project, if you're interested in writing or interviewing an organizer, uh, and producing one of these, we'd love to kind of keep it going. So uh, you can hit me up um, or look for information on the event organizer working group page for that. Uh, the event platform, as I said, is also another huge initiative that's been active in the last year. Uh, you can find information at drupal.org slash project slash event underscore platform. Uh, and we have here a screenshot of one of the many features uh, of the platform. So the events platform, as I said, is a, um, it's not a distribution, it's not a profile, it's not quite yet a recipe, but it's a bunch of modules that uh, can help event organizers build their website and, and provide some of the functionality that we all use. Uh, it was abstracted from the Florida Drupal Camp uh, website in 2022, and it's been continually kind of added on um, and improved. Uh, it's for any organizer, including those who may be new to Drupal. Uh, and so the goal, again, is to, to provide resources and to lower the barrier for, to entry um, for people who are organizing events. It can be used as a fresh install, so you can start totally out of the box um, with a brand new site. Uh, you can drop it into an existing theme. Uh, many camps already have their own custom branding. Uh, or you can use it piece by piece. If, if you've got a whole separate site, and just want to use the schedule or, or some other pieces, you can do that. A little more detail in there. Uh, some of the features that are in place already, there's a workflow for sessions. So this is one of the biggest pieces of organizing an event, right? You have to take submissions for sessions. You have to review them. You have to notify submitters whether they've been accepted or not. Uh, you have to display the list of accepted sessions. And then you have to schedule those sessions into rooms and show that information to your attendees. There are pieces for that workflow all throughout the way. Uh, sponsors are another really important part of events. So there's tools to, uh, to bring in sponsors and publicize what they're doing. There's a job board where uh, sponsors or, or other folks can list jobs. Uh, and a lot of the content throughout has, has been tokenized so that it can use common templates with event-specific customizations. I know Part of what we do for MidCamp every year is just copy and pasting the same stuff over and over. We're, we're doing a lot of similar communications year to year. And so tokenizing that um, sounds like it's a, it's a great a way to help reduce the load on organizers. Some of what's next for the events platform uh, is rebuilding uh, some of the features to take advantage of the features module improvements and align with the recipes initiative. There's a new, uh, there's a thought to get a new event-specific theme. The current theme is based on Olivero and, and uh, the, what Drupal Florida has, has done with that. Um, but something more specific to events would be, would be really awesome. Um, some improvements with block placement and also integrating more uh, ECA and, and workflow improvements. So um, Martin Anderson includes uh, Mike Herschel, Colleen Clarkson, um, they've all been instrumental in, in doing that work and uh, I'd encourage you to, to check it out. And now, Leslie's going to talk about community events. Thank you, Avi. All right, so I'm gonna talk about community events. How many people have seen this page, drupal.org slash community events? How many people have been there? Excellent, very good. Um, so basically, when we first started this, we have the we had the formation board for this event organizers working group. But this was the first thing we said: How do we add something to Drupal.org where everybody goes, where we can share event information? There was a lot of places you could go to. There was um, working groups, community groups on Drupal.org. There was the DrupalCal. There was a lot of different places people were using. So we said, let's come up with one place on the um, Drupal.org website. So we created this events page with the help of the Drupal Association. 
uh, engineering team, so thank you. Um, so basically, under events on the page on drupal.org, at the bottom, you'll see there's a community events link. So that's where this is all located. There are also links to the DrupalCons, the North America and International DrupalCon there as well. So on this events page, what we basically do is we try to add information for all the different types of events. So a lot of people think events are only camps and DrupalCons. Any place that community members get together is a Drupal event, okay, or a community event. So it's camps, it's meetups, it's trainings, contribution events. Uh, and just things like calls for content, you know, your camp needs speakers, so, you know, put up some information about when your calls for content are open. Uh, and then you can also put in here your proposed events, which I'll talk about in a minute, because it's important to know, I'm thinking about having an event in July on these dates. It's good for the other event organizers to know that, so when they're planning their event, they're not, you know, conflicting and going on the exact same date. Not that that can't happen, because sometimes that has to happen based on circumstances, but we try to not step on, each other, on the other camps or the other events, um, time frames. So that's basically, you know, there's a layout here that I'm gonna show you in more detail. We'll go through each of these, but it's basically drupal.org slash community slash events. So anybody here can add their events. How many people have added events to this page so far? Okay, how many people in this room could add their event had they known about this ahead of time. Anybody run camps? Okay, there's people in here that could do that. So it's important to put your events here, like I said, whatever type of event there, there might be, just so people in the community who you might not have outreach to, you know, you might not have them on your email list or you might not have a way to get in contact with them, but they come to Drupal.org most likely. So put your events here and then they'll be able to find them and then they'll Maybe they come to a meetup, but that's how they first get introduced to Drupal, and that's how you get them in the community, and then typically they'll stay. Once you find and they find out what a great community this is, they'll stay. So it, the, the big thing is how to get them at your events. All right, so first of all, I said you could add it at proposed, as proposed so that other people know your events are there. That's just an easy checkbox. Um, and then what's your event type? We have certain event types which I mentioned already, but there might, might be event types that we aren't thinking of. So by all means, uh, John Picozzi over here, uh, he's on this event information little um, initiative. We work on it together. So reach out to one of us. Um, let us know what we're missing, if there are other event types that we should be including here. And this is not just for North America, not just, you know, this is a global initiative. So I know there's not a lot of international folks here today, but we will be presenting information at Lil as well but we'd love to get all the global events up here as well, because a lot of them are still virtual. I've gone to so many things since uh, the pandemic started virtually that I never would have attended. You know, such great opportunity to, to, you know, to go to international events. And there's a lot of international folks that come to our Design for Drupal webinars, for instance. Really a lot of people that we would never have been able to reach out to if it was just a, you know, a local event. So the event type, and then what's your format? It can be online, it can be virtual, in person, or you can check off both, because there are hybrid events with it, both of those. Uh, then you put the dates in, whether it's a one day or multiple events, and you put your time zone. Um, who was at the initiative keynote yesterday and saw Ted Bowman's typo that he said? Yeah, there you go. Well, I found one this morning when I was just sitting there reviewing my slides. It's right there, the last bullet. Um, so. You want to change it from proposed to confirmed once you have your contract signed with the venue. And that often takes a while, so you add your event as proposed, and then eventually you get the confirmation and you want to put it as confirmed so that people understand your event is now an actual event that's going to happen on the dates you put in there. All right, then there's additional information you put in here, your URLs, that kind of stuff, when, when registration's open, you know, when the calls for content are open, and that's important because people typically will reach out, oh, I'm interested in Florida Drupal Camp, when are they, you know, when is, is it open to submit a session? So you, if you put your dates here, then everybody knows. Um, they don't have to go to the website necessarily, they can find them right here. Okay, and then another really important piece is from contribution day yesterday. A lot of people think contribution is just code, just technical, you have to be you know, a developer to contribute, you don't. There are many ways to contribute to the community through events. Some of them are listed here. 
You could be the code of conduct. George just spoke about the code of conduct, but there is, there is training that you take to become an official trained code of conduct representative. You could put those people in here. They're coming to your event. You should probably try and have at least one code of conduct uh, person to reach out to. Um, but you select their Drupal.org username here, and they get credit for being the code of conduct rep representative at your event. Same with organizers. Who organizes your event? They would get credit. Sponsors. Sponsors. What would we do without sponsors? We wouldn't have events without sponsors. So let's give the sponsors credit for sponsoring all the different events. Speakers. I know I speak at events quite a bit. It takes a lot of time to create the content, to practice it, to make sure that everything is you know, correct and up to date. Give the speakers, you know, and they travel to the events, give them credit for all the work that they do to help your event. And volunteers, the day-to-day -day volunteers. You know, who's helping you set up the venue? Uh, who's recording the sessions? You know, who's monitoring the sessions to make sure that there aren't issues? So all those people. So now Drupal.org, again, thanks to the Drupal Association, has enabled the, the contribution credit system to take into account all these different roles, okay? How many people in here didn't know that, that you were able to do this for an event, to actually add all this information and give credit? Okay, great, quite a few of you. So it's really important that you take the time to fill this out. Um, give, give the people that help you out with your events credit for doing that. Where will that information go? If you go to your Drupal.org profile, it actually lists for you your, the different contributions that you do. It will, it will show which camps you help organize, if you're a sponsor, which events you sponsored. So if I go to a particular company and I look at their Drupal.org page, it'll say hey, they sponsored all these different areas. And that's important for you to know that they're very involved with their community that they are giving back to the community. So you can go to their pages and look at all the places that they contribute. So this is all very important information. Um, I think it helps events grow, because people know, you know, I did this event, you know, we, have, we got credit for this event, but we also were able to encourage other community members to help us, and they, got, they received credit for helping us as well. There is a place where you can add your location if it's an in-person event and there are points that, add, that get added to the map, uh, we can expand on that, but that's just an easy way for you to find events in your local area that are, that are in person. So how do you fill this all out? There was a lot of information I just gave you. There is a link on the event page that says, are you organizing a Drupal event? Click here, find out information, and it basically gives you all the information on how to add an event. So it's very helpful information. So I encourage you to go there. All right, so we started the events page a couple years ago, John, maybe, um, and traffic has doubled in the past year. So people have found out about this, um, and there's over 300 events listed. Now, it does list some of the pr prior events as well. You can go in there and add your previous events, but it is working. People know, know about this page now, and they're starting to come to it. But not enough people know about it. International, global, not enough people uh, are filling, putting their events in there. There are some that are doing that. So if you could just reach out to your communities and tell people about this page when you have an event, just say our events listed on the community events page so people get used to going there to find all the information about the events in their area. Um, two other quick things I have here. I already said global representation. Thank you to the DA team as we, John and I, give suggestions and the rest of the board and the advisors give suggestions on how to make this page better. The uh, engineering team from the Drupal Association has, is very good about making those changes on this page for us, so thank you. Uh, yesterday I was doing project browser contribution all day for that initiative, but the board had their own um, contribution discussion around this events page. This events page is very complex, there's a lot of sections on it. They had a um, discussion yesterday about how to make that page better would love everybody's input into what they think. You know, when you go to this page, what do you want to see first? How would it be laid out to be most helpful to you and to your users, you know, other users in the community? So the issue, it's not as easy as George's issue number, is 33654666. And we'll publish that in our channel on um, the Drupal Slack. So there is an issue, it's called redesigning the community events page. So we will be reaching out to you for feedback on that.
but if you have any feedback, you can go to that issue and just comment on the issue and give us initial feedback. So that's all on the events page. Thanks for listening. And next up is Kristen talking about contribution. All right. So, um, yeah, you can have all sorts of events as we have seen here. And if there are other kinds of events, you're gonna let us know those. So make sure we add those to our, our list. But um, one special kind of event um, that I like and which we did yesterday was contribution events. And it's something I've participated in a long time. And um, who here was here yesterday? Did any kind of contribution? Okay, we had a, a fair number of people um, help out. So if you haven't before, I highly recommend that you try out a contribution event. Uh, there's so many things you can do and it doesn't have to be coding, it doesn't have to be technical. We were making logos yesterday, we were you know, doing documentation, all sorts of stuff. So if you've never done contribution, highly, highly recommend it. And so, there are many ways you could do contribution events, just like any event. Um, obviously, we have in-person events like you know we did yesterday. You can do fully remote. So one of the things that um, I helped organize last year was with the coming of Drupal 10. Um, there's all these contributed modules, you know, for adding on to Drupal, and not all of them had been ported to Drupal 10, and still not everything has been ported to Drupal 10. So I'm part of the Drupal 10 Readiness Initiative, and uh, one of the things that we did last year was try to organize remote porting events so that we could try to get people together and um, get more of those contributed projects over to Drupal 10, and we're, you know, still need more help with that. But um, there are also sometimes hybrid events. Um, those can be a little more challenging to run, but um, you can get hybrid contribution events as well. Drupal South just had one recently where you know they had contribution in person, but they also had people that were joining remotely. You might have a standalone event, like the one I described about you know this porting event, which that was just focused specifically on a very focused topic, and it was just for contribution. You might have um, something that's part of a camp, and if you're running a camp or you attend camps and you're interested in trying to add contribution to that event, that would be um, a great place to be able to enrich that local event. And of course, we have DrupalCon, which we had yesterday um, for contribution. So there's a lot of different ways that you can integrate um, contribution into the community. So um, yeah, just think about how you might want to add that and different ways you can participate. So why? Uh, obviously we want to make Drupal better uh, and we're always looking at improving Drupal, of course. Um, but it's not even just about Drupal, you know, it's nice to get together and have fun and enjoy each other's companies, um, uh, company and then also, you know, you can learn a lot of things. So, you know, and it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be coding that you're learning. Maybe you learn um, about plain language and, you know, learning to be a better at documenting or making things clear. Maybe that's something that you learn. But there's a lot of ways that you can, um, you know, benefit from a contribution event. You can draw people to your camp because sometimes people are actually interested in doing contribution. So if that is actually incorporated into your local event, you might be able to get more participation. And uh, typically when you, if you add contribution, uh, a contribution event to a, a local uh, camp, then um, you typically will get sponsors for that particular event. So it is a way to try to get sponsorship, um, perhaps from even different types of, um, you know, organizations that may not have sponsored in other ways. And of course, having fun. So uh, part of the contribution events initiative, um, just like with you know the event organizers working group, is to figure out resources to help people make it easier to run contribution events. So there are a number of ways that you can gather information. 
One is um, there is a checkbox. So when you're adding uh, events to the community events area on Drupal.org, you can, if it's a, a contribution, specific contribution event, there's a checkbox. Um, recently, the Drupal Association um, tech team, they added a way, if you have a camp and it has a, a, an aspect of contribution, you can actually check a box now that says that that camp has contribution, and that's a fairly new feature, which is pretty cool. So um, if you're wondering like who's doing contribution events and you know how are they doing them, how are they incorporating them, you can actually go and look and see past events and get an idea of like, oh, I see, I, they had this and it was a specific day or maybe it was in an afternoon. So there's different ways that you can incorporate contribution into an existing event. Uh, there is a whole guide on creating contribution events um, that's in the part of the community guide. So um, the documentation team is amazing and they've done all sorts of great documentation on how to contribute to Drupal. And one of these is uh, for organizing contribution events. We also have, uh, so on drupal.org you can, you, know, you can make a project for a module or a theme, but you can also make a project for anything. So you know, we have our own project for the event organizers working group. But um, there is also a, a special project called Contribution Events. And if you're not sure where you want to be able to credit people in order to do an event, especially if it's like a, sort of a standalone event, a one-off event, and it's focused on contribution, it is a space where you can help organize the event um, if you're not sure where else to put it and also credit people for the event. Um, this is in addition to using the, you know, you know, you would create an event on the community events area and then you can, you know, say who's volunteering, who's organizing, all that. That's in addition to that, um, you can make, you know, a meta ticket and then make a bunch of child tickets of like all the things that you need to do for your event. Maybe you're making logo, a logo for the event, you're um, trying to find you know, volunteers, you know, all that kind of activities, you can organize yourself there. And um, there is also a related a, a documentation space that um, if, so for example, for the remote events that were organized last year, um, it was just a space for us to write sort of um, the process for running uh, the, the porting events of just like, okay, here's a documentation space that we can go and and figure out what we want to say. Maybe eventually we would move that into a more official space, but um, this kind of gives us a, a place where we can organize ourselves. So there, there's plenty of ways to figure out how to um, organize contribution events and examples of previous ones that have been run. And if you need support, then obviously we have you know uh, the event organizers channel on Slack. Uh, there is also a contribution events channel that's uh, specifically for contribution events. You're welcome to you know, also talk about contribution events in the event organizers uh, channel as well, especially if it's gonna be tied onto a, a camp or, or a local event. And we have a mentoring channel. The mentoring channel is actually meant for mentors. So if you have people who are part of the contribution event who will be mentoring, we welcome them to, to participate there and get tips from other mentors on how that might work. And then we have the event organizers um, Slack meeting, which we'll hear about in just a bit, but there's also a, a contribution events Slack meeting that's kind of a similar format that's monthly. So there's different ways of getting support for, you know, if, if you're not sure how to add one and you don't know where you're going. Um, and then obviously I'm happy to have people reach out to me directly if you're, you're not sure exactly where to start. Um, that would be, you know, you can DM me, it's all good. So, so yeah, those are some ways of getting involved and hopefully you'll decide if you're running events that you'll have some sort of contribution aspect. Again, it could be a couple hours, it could be a full day, it could be an afternoon, right? Um, and there's just, you, you could fit it into however it works for your, your particular uh, camp or local event. Um, and then I guess one last thing is crediting. We talked about it a little bit, but 
Some uh, camps have their own project on Drupal.org, and so obviously they could do all the organizing there. They can, you know, create uh, all of their issues and child issues and all that kind of stuff and make sure to get people credit that way. But um, if you need a space, like you're not sure you're going to do a contribution rate, you don't know where to be able to organize that or um, credit people, that was um, the reason that the contribution events project was created, so that people have an easy place to go and do that. Uh, yeah, and that's it. So I'm going to hand it over to Sean. All right, uh, so I'm going to round this out, and then we'll have time for questions. Uh, so uh, as a board member, one of the kind of key things I've been trying to ramp up more is outreach with the EOWG. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we've done in the past year or so. Uh, so uh, prior to sometime last summer, we were in our own Slack uh, uh, workspace. Um, and about 400 people had ever signed into that. Um, and we decided that we really needed to start leaning into the community more. Uh, it was easier for people to just go to a new channel in the main Drupal Slack than it was to then sign up for another uh, uh, Slack workspace and all that kind of stuff. So we did end up moving to the main Drupal Slack in the event organizers channel. We invited as many people as we could find from the old Slack to the new Slack. And those numbers are about even right now in terms of how many people have uh, you know, signed into that channel at some point. So kind of flat right there, we're looking to grow that. We're looking to have more engagement in the event organizers uh, Slack channel. Um, we've also moved off of Zoom to Slack meetings. So like a lot of the other uh, groups in the community, DDI, contribution events, and uh, many others, D10 readiness, all these things, they have Slack meetings. There's kind of a standard format. So we've kind of leaned into that format as well. Um, those are the second Tuesdays at uh, 1600 UTC or 12 p.m. Eastern. And again, it's just kind of have a standard agenda. Anybody can suggest a topic that they want to talk about uh, related to their camp, funding, is it getting speakers, or whatever it might be. Um, and those are one hour synchronous with 24 hours async. Uh, we give credit for anybody who participates in those uh, conversations. Um, and that's gone really well. We're starting to get some new voices, some more global representation. And again, I think that's one of the big things that we're trying to do is get more uh, people represented from more places uh, within the Drupal community um, and hearing everybody's perspectives and uh, opinions and all the good things that they are doing uh, in their communities. Um, so do come uh, to that meeting if you can or at least follow along. Um, and then again, as, as Kristen said, we use Drupal.org issues uh, in our event organizers uh, project to archive those conversations so there's a historical thing because Slack goes away after a little bit. Uh, it also gives us a way of providing credit for those people who participate. And again, again, just using the, the tools that we have as a community to kind of, um, you know, not make another thing for ourselves. Um, so the other thing we've done over the past year is really uh, try to improve how we communicate to and for event organizers. Uh, so our monthly newsletter, we've redesigned it a little bit, um, tweaked uh, how we lay out content and things of that nature. And you know, from an EOWG communication standpoint, it's about pro promoting these Slack meetings, sharing blog posts that we have, other things of that nature. And from the community, we really want to highlight upcoming events, whatever type of events they are, DrupalCons, things like that, um, and boost calls for content, because I think we have I would say a little bit over 100 uh, email subscribers right now. Um, we obviously want to grow that more, um, but we use the community events page as our canonical source for all this information, so it's really important that everybody puts their information there. I will go on Slack and nag people where I'm like, I think you have a thing, and it's not there. Is it open? And then try to put it in here just so you know there's more reach. Um, because again, I get event organizers know speakers. They know sponsors, right? So there's other... Um, reasons why kind of connecting this uh, group of people is important because we can kind of share those things across the board or, you know, just uh, overall knowledge of the community of what's going on, I think it's pretty important. Um, so do subscribe for that. You can find that at the EOWG page. Um, 
uh, to that point, we were also trying to improve awareness. We had these nice little flags made uh, for DrupalCon this year. Uh, and thank, thanks to the Drupal Association for having that community table and giving us a slot uh, for one of the days there. Huge help to be uh, this year front and center, uh, having conversations with people, sharing all of our leftover stickers and other things that we had. So that was uh, very helpful. Um, and we do have community-led branding, which is this little upside down Drupal drop that's a map pin, technically. Um, uh, recently, we also got a short link, so we don't have to spit out like slash community slash event. Is it hyphen? Is it underscore? Is it plural? Is it not plural? So we just have nice drupal.org slash EOWG. It, easy to type in, find that page, and go other places. And we also now have uh, a email inbox that will distribute out to the board, so if Slack's not your thing, um, you can email eowg at association.drupal.org, and that will go out to all the uh, event organizers, board members, so we can put people in touch. Uh, again, just trying to remove some friction points uh, for people to reach out, give people other methods of trying to get uh, in touch with people. Uh, and I think that brings me to kind of my last slide here, which is really just, our, our overall goal is really just increase impact, right? So. We all do things in our own respective camps around the globe, and we need to facilitate that knowledge and resource sharing because a lot of us do the same thing, and we don't necessarily lean on what others have done in the past. Uh, actually, a good success story here is the Drupal Recording Initiative. So Ivan Thal has these kits that he will ship around two different camps. There's talk about having more regional kits uh, throughout the globe. Um, I think that's a huge thing. It's a huge service to the community. It helps us have all this content that then other people can see who do or do not come to our camps. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important that we try to get our information out and also help each other not only promote these events, identify areas for collaboration, whether that's, um, you know, uh, sources of funding, speaker bureau kind of things. Um, just other techniques that we're using, right? So if you're making prospectuses or how you're giving out sponsor benefits, all these kind of important topics that we all kind of struggle with, especially, you know, in the last few years. Um, how do you get back up and running as a camp when you haven't been doing it? Things like that. So I think it's really important for us uh, as a group and as a community to help each other as much as we can. So that's really our goal here. Um, to get involved, again, the website, uh, you join the Slack. Our next meet, uh, uh, meeting is June 13th, next Tuesday at 1600 UTC, 12 p.m. Eastern. Sign up for the newsletter, jump into our issue queue, see us around, ping us in Slack, that'd be awesome. Again, we wanna help other event organizers. We're here to help event organizers. We're not really just here to, to make documentation and do those things. It's all at the service of the wider community. And I think it's really important that we connect and you know try to lift all of ourselves up. Um, we can do this if we have time, but yeah, I don't know if we do. We're out of time. Yeah. There is a video that Martin just made, which we'll share out, which is a nice little demo of that event platform. It's in the event organizers channel. It's in the event organizers channel. Okay, cool. But huge con thanks to Martin for all the hard work that's gone into this and thought that's gone into this. So, you know, hopefully this can get some new, uh, camps and meetups and things of that nature off the ground. Oh, it's gonna play, come on. I'm trying to skip it. Let me skip it. There we go, okay. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're over time. We're yeah. running a little bit late. Um, okay. We do have 15 minutes that's supposed to be gathering time after lunch. And so if you could still go to after lunch, that would be great. And if you do have to leave, that would be great too. Okay, mm -hmm. should we do one or two questions or should we? Yeah. So we can talk during lunch or whenever. All right, thanks.